Well, y'all knew I had to get in on this conversation. Y'all knew I had to come let y'all know what is the actual way to handle these things. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk to the ladies first. And then I'm going to talk to the fellas. This conversation about 50-50 is tiresome, if I'm being completely honest. We are once again having a conversation with people who are thinking at a selfish level. We got people who ain't been in a relationship in 10 years, don't even know what a healthy relationship looks like, trying to give relationship advice on if somebody should be going 50-50 with their partner or not. How is 50-50 ever a thing, you know? There's no such thing as 50-50. If you get into a relationship, right, and you say, yo, we're going to split the bills down the middle, you come out with your half, I come out with my half, and we're going to live life in a happy, happy little road. I already know y'all set up to fail. The biggest issue people make when it comes to relationships is they don't have the financial conversation. Ladies, because I'm talking to y'all first, you do not, under no circumstances, because what I'm, I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking to y'all how I, what, of what I would say to my daughter. I want y'all to understand. I'm going to say to y'all what I would say to my daughter. I'm not telling y'all something I wouldn't tell my own child. You know what I'm saying? I have a child, a daughter. And I would tell her these same things. And I have a son, a son's, I have multiple sons, one daughter, multiple sons. And I would tell them the same thing. So I'm going to talk to the ladies like I would tell my daughter. Or what I would tell my daughter, I might not use the same language, but I would still, the same concept I would tell my daughter. And fellas, when I talk to you, I'm going to talk to y'all like I would talk to my sons. And I might not use the same language, but I'm going to talk to y'all that way. Right? So check me. When you get in a relationship, the moment that you guys decide to move in together, honestly, not move in. The moment y'all decide to establish a relationship you need to have a financial conversation. You need to know where this person is financially. The reason why you need to know this is because one of the most draining, dangerous situations that you can put yourself into is someone who's not financially in a position or not financially honest. I'll say that because everybody don't have to be well off to have a healthy relationship. It's better to ha have someone who's financially well off. Some people need a little bit of guidance and they can get there. Some people just need a little bit of advice. Some people need a little help. Like, for instance, when we say this 50 50 thing, I'm getting off track, but I want to get, I'm, it's going to all correlate. Stay with me. It's going to all correlate. If you're in a situation with someone, right, we speak this 50 50 thing, there is somebody who's paying 100% of their bills. If somebody in their life came in and paid 20%, they will not only be well off, they will be able to make the financial leaps that can take care of two people plus the family. Like some people are just literally one situation away or one person away. Like I'm paying 100 percent of everything, my bills. I'm just, I, I'm just making enough, or I got to do a little extra work just to make enough. If somebody came in and took 20 percent off their shoulders. This person will now have enough free time, enough energy, and enough availability to take it to the next level. That business that they've been trying to get started, they now have that time to start that new business. Or that side hustle they was looking to get done, they now have the time and resources to start that side hustle because somebody just took 20% off their plate. Not 50, not 100. Your girl been wanting to sell wigs for six months, and every time she thinks she got the money to sell wigs, something comes up. Your man been wanting to get into real estate classes for the past eight months. Every time he thinks he's putting money to the side, some shit comes up that he got to pay. So my point is, you need to have the financial conversation to see where someone is. They need to be financially honest. Look. Right now, my credit is fucked up. Um, I'm, I'm, I got money coming in, but I can't seem to fix this credit situation. I don't know what to do. I need some help with that. You may be able to show them the snowball effect. Snowball effect is when you take, one of your, uh, you take the largest one credit card you have, you start making extra payments on that, and you pay the minimum of all the other ones. And then once you're done paying, making the payments on that, 
paid it off, you put it to the side. Now those payments that you was making on that one, you take those payments and you, cause now that's paid off. There's no payments that are going to be due. Don't use this shit. It's paid off. There's no payments going to be due on that one. Now you can take that one, the payments you were making on that and apply it to another one. Right? So now you boom, boom, boom. You're doing the same thing. So let's just say you got five cards, $100, right? That's $500. I'm just going to use it just a clean number. The minimum payment is $10 on each one of those cards. You take one card and you say, okay, I'm going to pay $20 on this card until I pay it off. And now that one has no payment. The next one, because I was already paying the $10, right? Already paying $10 a month on the other ones, plus that $20 on that one. Now I can take the $20 I was paying on that one and add it to the next one. Now the next card is getting $30. Boom, boom, boom. That's paid off even faster. Now you take that $30 and you add it to the 10 that you were already paying to the next card. That's $40. Boom, boom, boom. That's paying off faster. The other one, now you take that $40, add the 10 That's $50. Boom, boom. That's two payments you paid off faster. That's, the snow, that's an example of the snowball effect, right? So you do that. Boom. You might have just introduced somebody to that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's different things that y'all can provide for each other. And because you took that 20% off the table, they're able to do it. So as you can already tell which way I'm leaning, we're going to get to that. Ladies, I'm going to be straight up with y'all. Y'all not built to work manual labor like men are. Y'all not even built to mentally work the way men are. Y'all need maternity leave. Y'all need FMLA. All that shit was made for y'all. Workers' comp was only made for men because we was getting killed at the job and they was leaving our family with jack shit. Or we was getting hurt at the job, couldn't work, leaving our family dead and destitute. destitute. So that's where workers' comp came from. Workers' comp was never a situation where we were supposed to be sitting at home alone because we got a fucking headache. FMLA was made for women. And if you don't know what FMLA is, it just simply means if you got any type of medical condition, including getting frequent migraines, you can take a day off and be protected from getting fired from your job. That is not some shit that was made for men. Women are not mentally or physically built to work like men are. I don't care what y'all say. And this is a general topic. And I'm talking in general. Yes, there are some women who are able to do it and chug it along, whatever case may be, they lose their femininity. But women are not mentally or physically able to do that and maintain their femininity. It's just not possible. It's impossible. So the best thing that can happen is a man come through and do what he do. That's the best thing that can happen, right? So, ladies, you get in, you're getting ready to get into a... Things are starting to get serious in a relationship, right? If y'all become official, y'all need to have that financial conversation. Hey. We're officially together. We are a team now. And as a team, we need to know every situation that's going on. I need you to sit down with me. I know this may be hard. I know this may be something you may not want to do, but it's important for the progress of this relationship. You and I need to sit down and have a financial conversation. We, I need to know where your credit is. I need to know what debts you have. And I need to know what the income is. Both people need to do that. Because what happens is people get in these relationships and a the person spending, they like, oh, this person got to have money. Everything got to be good. And then you realize this person fucked up. Then you realize it all comes crashing down. Then you realize it all catches up to them. You cannot run from your financial situation. It is impossible. So ladies, when you get in that relationship, bring it up. A lot of y'all be embarrassed. Like, oh, shit, I'm... My shit kind of fucked up. Nine times out of ten, us as men know, y'all already probably all in some type of debt. Y'all already are in some fucked up situations. Um, especially the older you are. I need to know what that car payment is. I need to know what that rent is. I, everything. Bring it all to the table once we have that financial conversation. Because it should be a one-time conversation, to be completely honest with you. The first one. That big initial one, laying it all on the table. That's one conversation. So now, as men, we think logically. We spend logically. Women, y'all think emotionally, y'all spend emotionally. So when you decide that, oh, I want to go get me a new car. Oh, hold on, baby. You, you got that 2011 Nissan Altima. You overpaid for that motherfucker. Right now, your balance on that Nissan Altima is 11000 That motherfucker ain't worth nothing but six. That's a $5,000 rollover, baby. You ain't going to get no new car right now. We need to handle that, that negative equity first. And once that negative equity is handled, we'll go ahead and approach your next car. And the reason why you want to handle that negative equity, because then you're rolling over, you're not rolling over money from an old car. You're going to get a better, better interest rate in that deal. 
And that give you time to get that credit cleaned up to get a better interest rate. The better your interest rate is, the better situation you're going to always be in. Credit is so fucking vital, it's sickening. That's the logical decision a man to make. I know y'all want to be in something new. Y'all want to be in something cute. No, 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 no. Just because you can pay a bill don't mean you can afford the bill. You feel me? Just because you can pay five, six hundred dollars on a car note don't mean you can afford five, six hundred dollars on a car note. You may can pay five, six hundred dollars, but you should be paying three hundred dollars. You see what I'm saying? So that is the mentality that we got to think about. That is the mentality that we need to move in. You need to have that conversation. Fellas, do not, let a, do not get in a situation with a woman and not know her financial situation. Because honestly, women come with more debt than men in most cases. Women come with more debt than men. Women buy these fucking store cards. These, they have seven, eight different store cards. Like, it's, it's crazy. Men ain't doing all that shit. I'm not saying that financially who's better off than not, but we, we have a lot of women have a lot more financial pitfalls than men, meaning society has set women up to be in bad financial circumstances more than they set men up. So y'all both need to have that conversation. A logical, competent man is going to help you get out of that bad financial situation because he's going to cut all that goddamn spending down. Hey, baby. We got to take care of this, 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 and this. Hold it down for six months, and I'm going, and we're going to get you right. Hold it down for a year, we're going to get you right. You got to be dealing with a competent man to understand. If a man ain't talking to you like that, if a man ain't telling you, if a man, if you know your financial situation fucked up, right, and you have, uh, uh, and you getting into a relationship with a man, and a man ain't calming you the fuck down or telling you you need to cut back on that goddamn spending, that means he's just as, he's even more financially irresponsible than you, and you guys are going to be in a financial circle, uh, cycle for your entire relationship. A man is supposed to be able to tell you, look, that ain't the move right now. That's not acceptable right now. That ain't the move right now. What we're going to do is do it this way. We're going to do it this way, and then it's going to eventually... What it is is, woman, ladies, you might have something you want. And he may tell you, yo, if a man is trying to tell you, nah, we can't do that. Nah, I don't know. That ain't going to happen. I don't think that should be the conversation. The conversation should be, unless your shit is just in some fantasy land, of course. The conversation should be like, okay, look, this is what we're going to do. Before we do that move, we need to do this, this, and this. That'll clear up this amount of money to where when we do that move, that's a way more better move for us. That's a fitting move for us. That's a financially stable move for us. So you may want to get you uh, a brand new, let's just say you want a BMW. Fuck it, $50,000 BMW. I don't know what year that'd be. It don't matter. Right? And right now you got a $20,000 car. You, you're talking about you want to spend $30,000 more. That's going to be at least two, dollars $300 more on a car note. You know what I'm saying? So he may be like, yo, right now we combine, we make X amount of dollars. Our credit is, is both, below six, uh, both below 700. So what we're going to do is we need to clear up this debt, this debt, this debt, and this debt. Get our credit scores to this and this. Combine our income, go joint on the um, what's my car, and now we got a better situation doing that. I don't recommend buying no goddamn car like that until you get a house. But that's just using an example. So ladies, if a man is not telling you, hey, Slow your ass down or, hey, if he's not basically correcting your spending habits, your guys are going to be in a, a financial cycle. And I understand you ladies don't like to be told nothing. You don't like to be told what to do, but you say you want to be led. That is leadership. Leadership don't come pretty. Leadership don't come wrapped in a little basket with a bow on it. That ain't how it works. Sometimes it comes harsh. Sometimes it comes soft. But it's always going to be within logic. And I understand that some women don't like to think in logic because Lord knows y'all don't like to think in logic, but you got to start listening. You got to start listening because if you do dealing with men that are smarter than you, he's only going to upgrade you. Men don't mind dealing with women that are dumber than them. That's clear. A lot of weak men get intimidated by when the, the women that are smarter than them because what happens is women that are typically smarter than the men they're dealing with, they like to be condescending to the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Once a woman knows she knows something more, better than you, don't matter what the age is. If they know they know something more than you or better than you, they're going to be like, man, you don't get the fuck. They get disrespectful sometimes. 
Ain't no man dealing with no disrespect because you know something better. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Now, fellas, let's talk to you. Cash ain't king no more, my guy. I know y'all like to have cash. I know y'all think cash is king. A lot of you niggas ain't got no bank account. You don't even need bank accounts in this world. You can get Chime. You can get Venmo. You can get Cash App. They let you direct deposit to all them motherfuckers. So not having a bank account, fellas, that shit is inexcusable. Even if you're in the streets, that shit is inexcusable. Just because you're in the streets don't mean you can't have a bank account. <coughs> Just because you're in the streets don't mean you can't have a bank account. No, no, no. So, all that, having to put everything in your girl name, always needing to use her bank account. Hey, yo, you got, you got X amount of dollars, I'll pay you. All that goofy nigga shit, cut that shit out. Get a fucking bank account. Get a bank account. And whatever your means are, you need to be able to put most of your bills on automatic payments. That should be your goal. Your goal should be to put most of your bills on automatic payments. And I know y'all like to say, oh, automatic payments. I ain't trying to do all that. Put it on a damn credit card. Pay it off with the debit card. But most of your bills, you should want to put on automatic payments. Because I know with us as men, we live a little more low maintenance. I know some of y'all dudes like to live a little flashier lifestyle. And whatnot, but most things we don't we don't incur a lot of debt. When you're dealing with a woman, it is more important to you than it is to her to find out her financial circumstances, because it's gonna fall on your shoulders, bro. When she come up short, she's looking directly at you to con to go ahead and compensate. So if you're letting her be irresponsible and she's constantly coming up short, she's going to fuck up your financial goals and your financial situation. So it is more important to you to know her financial circumstances because it's going to fall on you. That is women's natural expectations. I fucked up. Oh, I got a man. I'm giving somebody some pussy. So guess what? Since I'm giving this motherfucker some pussy, he needs to come up with some shit to fix my financial circumstance. I don't give a fuck what's going on. He needs to help. She not going to ask you if you, hey, I, I got this bill that's due. I need you to take care of that. And let you say I ain't got it too many times. She going to find a nigga that do. She going to find a man that does. Tell her you ain't got it one too many times. Let her have to go to her father, her brother. What she got you around for? She, this is her thought process. I got a man. If I got a man, he should be able to help provide some of these things for me. He should help take care of some of these things for me. I know y'all asking, what does God do with 50 50? I'm getting there. This is all, this all matters. This all matters. So if she's saying that, that means your position is, you know, she's on her way out. And as a man, you always want to operate from a position of power. Stop letting society trick y'all. Y'all keep thinking that, oh, man, he, I'm about to get me a girl. That's a hustle. I'm a hustle. We're going to get together and we're going to make it. Shut up, nigga. Shut up. These women ain't built mentally or physically to work like we are. They ain't interested in no motherfucking 50-50. You stupid. You see... Glorilla said it and Cardi B said it because they said they don't want to be at the mercy of a man. That's because they were dealing with an irresponsible one. Because if they was dealing with a man that was properly leading them, he understands it ain't got to be 50-50. I can take the bigger burden, but with me taking a bigger burden, you got to provide something that's going to help ease it for me. Jason Black. The wise words of the black book said, he said, I was listening to his shows, right? Because I listen to the business. That's my source of information. That's the black book. You know, I, I, I get my game from him. And then I, and in my life, I, I spread it how, based on my own thoughts, of course. But I love to listen to his, his viewpoint. So he said he was dealing with a girl and he told her, he said he's financially well off, right? 
And he told her, he like, look, you gonna work two days a week. She knew he was financially well off, so she thought she was entitled to not have to work at all. He said, no, 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 you gonna work two days a week. You go, go work a part-time job, you gonna work two days a week. She thought she was entitled. They end up breaking up, and now she gotta work six days a week. Now she gotta work five days a week. Her emotions and her irrationality and her entitlement costed her a situation where she would have went from two days a week of working to five to six days a week of working to keep the load off them bills. That's why as men, it's important that you operate from a position of power because you don't ever want to be in a situation where you can get kicked out the house. You don't want to be in a situation where she can go take your car. Like, that's my car. And just take the motherfucker from you. You don't want to be in those circumstances. So it's important that your credit and your finances and having a bank account and shit like that is up to scratch so you don't put yourself at the mercy of anyone. Now, there's women saying they'll go do 50-50, right? That's cool. But in a relationship, let's be honest. Let's be completely honest. It's not 50-50. It's not. Whoever makes the most money is contributing the most to the bills. It's that simple. Sometimes it's fit. Sometimes, honestly, I don't think it's ever 50 50 because I don't think, I don't know of couples that say straight up here, give me your half of every single bill. Most of them say, all right, who makes the most money? You pay this. You pay this thick bill, which is usually the rent. I'll take care of the utilities. You take care of this. Like, you know what I mean? Then we contribute both on this. this is, like, it's usually some shit like that. Right? So what you don't want to ever put yourself in a position of doing is not knowing what you're dealing with, especially with the woman, because they'll, they don't tell you in advance. It's usually on some... Um, it's usually on some old... I'm sad. Hey, what, what you sad about? I gotta pay my phone bill tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? You, you knew you had to pay this motherfucker how long ago and you just now telling me the day before? What the fuck is up? You don't want those. Those are stressors. You don't want them kind of conversations. You like, yo, you, you over house chilling. You're like, yo, why you so sad? What is going on with you? I thought we was good. Like, you know what I mean? You trying to figure out what the fuck going on. Lo and behold, her electric bill, she just got the final notice, and that motherfucker do in three days. But because you didn't have a financial conversation, you didn't know she was behind on that electric bill. You have the means to, even, like, you may even have the means to be like, yo, I can actually kind of ease this burden for you. Let me, let me, let me, here, let me put this, let me put this hundred, one hundred, two hundred dollars on that today and then you see me in a you know see me in a week or two i put another you know what i mean you might have the whole strategy plan to take care of that whole thing and make sure she good but because you didn't have the conversation she's gonna wait to us at the worst final moment because she's what she's trying to do is which women y'all need to stop fucking doing this stop doing this what she's trying to do is put the pressure on you to the point you can't say no she don't want to hear no or i don't have it so she makes sure she gets you in the position she corners you like, yo, I mean, I, I don't, my phone got cut off last night. Yo, you knew your bill, you know what time your bill is due every month. Why, why do you wait until it's cut off to tell me this information? Because what she wants you to do is say, oh, I'm here, what, how much is it? Let me take care of it now. Instead of preparing you to take care of it in advance, she waits to the worst case scenario and then tell you about it and expect you to just come out of nowhere like Superman and take care of it. Ladies, stop doing that shit. You know when your bills are due. This is why as men, you got to have that financial conversation. You have to. Because if you don't, you're going to deal with a lot of stress in a relationship and you're going to start looking at her funny. Like, yo, how are you this irresponsible financially? It's because you didn't have the conversation with her. You would have knew how irresponsible she was and you could have cleaned that right up quickly. One conversation, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to tell me, when, when you, wait, wait, what's going on with this situation? Because when you're having a conversation, you're going to know about the problems. Like, right, what's going on with this, this, and this? All right, what, ha what steps have you taken to solve this? Okay, all right, well, going forward, this is how we're going to do this to get this cleared up so we can make sure, like, you know what I'm saying? So ain't no such thing as no damn 50-50. Cut that shit out. 
Cut it out. 50-50. And then to the women out there that's saying, I ain't going 50-50 with no man. I might as well do it on my own. Well, do it on your own then. Go ahead and do that 100% on your own, goofball. Yeah, fellas, if you hear any woman you see saying that, run from her. Run. Because that means she is financially immature. Any woman who thinks that she's too good to go 50-50, and the real conversation is the simple fact is, is she willing to contribute to bills? If she feels like she's too good to contribute to bills when she's with a man, then let her foot, hook that shit on her own because they still going to be out here fucking. They ain't going to stop the fucking. It's just going to stop them from, you know, all the other shit. Some of them might be on some old uh, 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 third-party hoeing where they be like, look, you know what I mean? We fucking, so I feel like because we fucking, you know, you, some shit that you should be taking care of for me. And you ain't got to have no actual real attachment to her. It's just she figure, fuck it. Since y'all fucking, she might as well get a little bit of money out of y'all. She half a hoe. She half a hoe. You don't want nothing to do with no half a hoe. Get them stomp down hoes. Stomp down money making hoes. Don't play those kind of games. Stomp down money making hoes. Don't say no stupid shit like I ain't dealing with no men if I got to, and going 50 50 with no men. I got to. Stomp down hoes. Don't talk like that. Stomp down hoes. Get that money. So if you hear that from a woman, fellas, run away quickly. 50 50 is a myth. Contribution matters. Like I said, it's going to be times where it's 50 50, 100 0, 70 30, 60 40, 80 20, 90 10. Financials go up and down, man. There's, like, it, there's, there's no set in stone way to do it. As long as y'all both putting your best foot forward to make sure things get taken care of and y'all increasing your quality of life, whatever works for y'all, works for y'all. You feel me? Thank y'all for tuning in. I know this is more of a longer episode, but I felt like it was some important pieces I need to touch on. Um, so, yeah, man. Hit me up with y'all comments, conversation pieces, things of that nature. Let me know what you think, man. HBO Marvel on all social media platforms. HBO Marvel on all streaming platforms. i catch y'all boys on the flip side. I told y'all I'm flooding y'all all week, man. I'm just going to be hitting y'all up all week. I got a couple more episodes to do. I'm just going to keep them going, letting them fly. Fuck it. Let's get it. This podcast is distributed by Marv Media Network.